So welcome to uh, the Asakusa experiment at uh, CERN's anti-proton decelerator facility. So the experiment Asakusa is an international collaboration that studies a atom made of half matter and half antimatter. There's a helium nucleus around which there are two electrons. In our experiment, we replace one of these electrons with an antiproton. So we synthesize an atom with a helium nucleus at the center with an electron and an antiproton revolving around it. And in the past, we studied the mass of the antiproton and compared it with the mass of the electron to study the symmetry between antimatter and matter. That is the main goal of our experiment. But when we tried to do this, we discovered a surprising, unexpected phenomenon. We have, uh, as you know, helium, when you cool it down, it will become a liquid. And even if you cool it down to two degrees above uh, zero degrees, it becomes, it turns into a superfluid. We stopped antiprotons into in the superfluid so that this uh, half matter, half antimatter atom is created inside the superfluid liquid. Then we shone a laser beam through the transparent uh, liquid and then we found that the atoms inside this liquid is behaving in as if it's almost as if it's uh, not being disturbed by the surrounding matter around it. This was very surprising for us because in the past, we always took care to keep the atoms away from matter. It's as if inside this uh, liquid, the atom, the antimatter atom, perhaps is sitting inside a bubble, a protected bubble of an electron so that it can be uh, trapped inside liquid and studied. So this was the surprising effect. We think this can be useful for several applications. One is that uh, the antiproton can be a kind of probe, a measurement device to study the behavior of the su condensed superfluid liquid. That is one uh, possibility. A second possibility is uh, in the space probes in outer space, there is also liquid helium. And now we must assume that since there are antiprotons in space that are flying toward the Earth, some of these antiprotons will stop inside the liquid, which is already in space, and producing these atoms. And then if you can put some kind of measurement device into space, you can study the properties of uh, the antiprotons that are coming from space. That is a second uh, possibility. A third possibility is that there are many types of different antimatter in the universe, in the standard model. There are things called pions, which are negatively charged, kaons, which are negatively charged, anti-deuterons, which are negatively charged. You can, in principle, uh, put all of these uh, particles also into liquid and study their properties in that way. So this is the, we hope this uh, new uh, finding will open new doors into this kind of applications. You know that in the beginning of the universe, uh, there was a big explosion called the Big Bang. And what CERN does is to try to recreate that Big Bang. And Einstein has shown us that when there's energy, the, the early universe was filled with energy, when you convert, uh, the, that energy can be converted into matter. So this was originally energy. Uh, but when we try to recreate the early universe inside the CERN accelerator facilities, we discover a very interesting fact. When you convert energy into matter, you always produce the equal amount of antimatter. This is unavoidable. It is fundamentally built into the universe.